Well, it's backed by popular demand. Grabbing the big one on blue checks. All right, watch this. You've got your little cohort of 200 people at SBS that constantly bitch to each other. Well, let's expose your thoughts to an actual audience. Yeah! Oh, no, it's Digital Hiroshima! Today, we'll be looking at their response to the Bruzz video, which, as always, was very nuanced and intellectual. And by that, I mean it was fucking insane. insane. This thread is particularly revealing because as journalists, they really shouldn't be celebrating a politician suing someone for exposing their shady past. And yet they are because there's the cognitive dissonance in their mind of, but it's friendly Geordies and he makes content that people actually engage with and that pisses me off. Why can't they just look at my content that sucks? That's really why they hate me. I do stuff. It just reminds them that they're incompetent and lazy and instead of actually producing content that people want to engage with, let's just go back on Twitter again and complain about the person that's doing things. And who better to get the train of hate going than Osman Faruqi, the man that sued Mark Latham because he dared call him a racist, even though all he does online is accuse people of being a racist. Yes. That is the best person to be making points about defamation suits. The man that abuses defamation laws in this country for his own personal ego. The problem with celebrating people who accuse politicians of corruption but do it in a loose, callous way is that if they lose the defo case, it basically shuts down reporting on that issue. What reporting on the issue, you waste of space? We broke the story about John Barillaro's family debt trapping the Italian Marco Polo Club. The Sydney Morning Herald came after us. You fucking moron. It's not heroic to make those accusations for the lulls or attention, says the man who makes this tweet specifically to write off an event for attention. It hinders good work. Well, there's a problem with your assumption that there's good work out there, Osman, in that it assumes that you and the rest of your posse are worth a pinch of shit. But the second point is, what? I started picking on the Deputy Premier of New South Wales for attention. Do you think anyone knew his name before I started putting stupid fat idiot next to it? People probably still don't know his name. That's probably why you're not referencing him in this tweet. You still don't know who it is. That is the dumbest target for just a YouTube beef. I may as well choose John Burjo for Burjo's catchphrase. At least he has something of a public profile. Yeah, it's funny to go after Job Barillaro, but that's because I made it funny. It's because I actually have a skill set in light, Osman. I was trying to draw attention to his black corruption and you are still sitting there in this tweet denying that that f is corrupt wow go check out his podcast guys i'm sure you'll get to the bottom of the truth there imputations can successfully be drafted on stuff that has been legal to hell by people with 50 years experience in investigative journalism that's why every word sentence matters if you actually cared about holding power to account osman your entire twitter profile is nothing but loose callous words you are living proof that every word every sentence doesn't matter and Unless you piss specifically you off because you're the one that abuses defamation laws. Shut the f*** up. Osman is making the point that only pre-approved journos are the ones that get to accuse politicians of being corrupt. You know, the ones that are buddy buddies with those corrupt politicians. Yes. You really are holding power to account, aren't you, Osman? Thank God Michael West weighs in. I know blue checks have made this a dirty word, but the hacks on Twitter all have the blue check next to them. All the legends have the raindrop. Here's what he says. Seeing as you've sued for hurt feelings yourself and made money from it, would be interested in your view on these threats. In reference to the fact that three of the best journalists in this country are currently getting slapped with defamation suits, see Michael West work on that, to which another blue check heavyweight, Mr. Over a hundred thousand tweets himself. Ket and Joshi just has to weigh in with such a left of field response for this man. I'm sure not 90,000 out of those 100,000 tweets aren't exactly this point. Speaking as someone who's been hit out with a spurious defo suit, works as a freelance writer for an independent outlet and has been on the receiving end of racist pylons. Oh, I thought you can handle pylons, Ketan. What happened to that, mate? I think it's a really off colour and unpleasant thing to say. Yeah, but you think asking someone not to be disrespectful is off colour. You're a little bitch. 
Yeah, what Mark Latham said is unpleasant. Virtually everything that comes out of your victim complex mouth is unpleasant. Just shut up about it. Get off Twitter. You don't have to sue people for it. You don't have to drain the taxpayer's purse because you're butthurt. Before you were going off about being disrespectful to public servants, you know what I think is really disrespectful? Wasting their f***ing time like Osman did. Look, I'll show you how morally consistent I am on this point. You right? Pretty much inevitable that Shanks will just continue pointing out his audience to more non-white targets. Just like it's inevitable for you to make more tweets going, Hey, just everyone, just so you know, I'm non-white. Non-white. I get to be a victim because I'm a non-white. <laughs> my life is so terrible. <laughs> I'm not just, why do I keep losing jobs? It must be because of my skin color. Whether it's conscious or not, he recognizes that that draws numbers like nothing else on YouTube. You stupid f Go look at my numbers. All of my greatest hits are all paying out white people. You're so f in your own f***ing narcissistic mind that you can't even look up most viewed. But here's how morally consistent. You're imputing that I'm racist. Exactly what Mark Latham was doing to Osman. I'm not going to take you to court. I'm just going to continue paying you out. Os will probably cop it. I might again. The algorithm teams it so. Oh, the algorithm's racist too. Dude, get help. Anyway, yeah, let's make sure that Osman cops it. Let's go back to him. The why won't the mainstream media report on the issue that was first reported in the mainstream media cult is probably my favourite. And I say that as someone who hates 99% of the people in the media. Well, what a coincidence, Osman, because I'm pretty sure 99% of the people in the media hate you as well. But we retorted this at length in the Sydney Morning Herald video about this exact subject. And we kept tweeting that video at you. We even timestamped it. And instead of refuting the point, you then go on to argue with some of my fans in your own Twitter page. We were talking to you. Come on, come on, refute it to me. Let's do this. Oh, you don't want to respond to that TMI? Yep, fair enough. I forgot you're a Twitter addict. You can't comprehend concepts that are longer than 240 characters. I'll just give you the dot points. The we reported it in the media point that you are defending is the Sydney Morning Herald reporting that they went to lunch with John Barillaro. That was one of the sources that we were using from the Sydney Morning Herald. Over half the sources that we were using from the Sydney Morning Herald were just press releases from John Barillaro because they came up quicker in the Google search engine than us going to John Barillaro's website. The others were just from Labor Dirt Units and Independent MP Dirt Units. They came up with one piece of information, one fact. Their entire half the media owned by this one organization could come up with one damning fact about the Deputy Premier. We have entire videos, some of them spanning the length of Four Corners reports on this man's corruption. We've got more in the pipelines, and they come up with one sentence. Osman, I'm saying this for your benefit. It would honestly benefit me if you kept being as stupid as you currently are. But if you're going to refute someone, Maybe watch their content first. Michael West then weighs it with Friendly Geordies does more research than The Guardian, doesn't get cash from Google via the government media bargaining code, hashtag sanctimony. Greg Jericho, who's just a boomer version of Osman Faruqi, he again is just jealous that Michael West gets more clicks than him, and he responds with the same thing they always do, which is no facts, just a smug tone of, that's just a really silly assertion, Michael. Oh, that's a great response to the fact that your paper did a deal along with the Burdock Press and Fairfax to get some money out of Google. Great job. Job, Greg. Greg, are you saying that more work slash investigation goes into a Guardian story than a Friendly Geordie story? Are you saying that your defo risk is the same? Does Friendly Geordies get Canberra bubble drops like the Guardian? Thank you very much, Michael. I will add some more detail to that. You know that story that I did about Scott Morrison's best friend being one of the big QAnon head honchos in Australia and how it's really strange that the Prime Minister has in his ears a total conspiracy nut? The Guardian had the same source going to them. The Guardian did a piss week rendition of that. Why did they do a piss week rendition of that story? Because they wanted drops from Scott Morrison. Check, mate, you blue check. Realising that one of the 300 idiotic things Osman said that day was getting some heat, he did a nice little retreat tweet with all of the classic Twitter tropes, such as, Honestly, the most boring pylon I've ever been involved in. Yes, if I act undisturbed, everyone will think I'm undisturbed because no one can see my face. Hmm, no, no one's, one's done, done that, that on Twitter, Twitter before. before. There's no stakes. I just made a general point about why reporting that isn't careful can have a chilling effect, e.g. rush. No, you did it, Osmond! 
That bros video came out that day. No one was accusing Jeffrey Rush of corruption. And the most low energy people are angry. You cannot call anyone on earth low energy. Not even Jeb Bush. We'll play three seconds of you. Three seconds, here we go. Hi, I'm Osman Faruqi, and this week on The Filter, we're talking- Jesus, and I know this is gonna piss him off, but he's a human white. Noise machine. Osman, you don't care about holding truth to power. You care about consolidating as much power in your claspy, clammy, nerdy little hands as possible. You don't want to give it to the people. You aren't part of the people. You are part of an elite bubble that has this little champagne socialist little dream about yourself of, yes, yes, I represent Australia. Does representing Australia mean having coffees and discussing racism in art? You will celebrate a corrupt politician that f**ks over millions of working class Australians suing a YouTuber that is pointing out that he is f**king over millions of working class Australians because you perceive that YouTuber to be more of a threat to you personally in your digital little space. Osman, the reason that you do have that worldview is because you're not f**king working class. You are of the same class as John Barillaro. That's why you seem to empathise with him more. You both use the courts that are funded by working people that don't have access to those courts as your little personal plaything. You both use public platforms that are funded by the working class that the working class doesn't have access to as your little sanctuary and your personal grievances while I talk about extinction. Osman, if only you understood your privilege. Anyway, make sure that you buy one of these stupid fat idiot shirts. I think they're of tremendous quality and value. Get a keychain as well. And I'm very happy to announce because we are going to make this a series. Oh, sorry about that, Blue Checks. You don't get your little haven anymore. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's someone with an actual audience. Surprise! We're going to be selling official Flutter Dolly shirts. A, because I think it's hilarious, and B, because we're going to make sure that you f**ks are actually contributing to society. 10% goes to Fame or Animal Rescue Collective, whichever one I feel like donating to. Please share and comment below. Come in.